Hi, and welcome to Curl Tutorials. Today we'll be exploring the content menu from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. This widget is designed to make adding a menu anywhere on your site simpler and easier than ever. And I do mean anywhere. With this widget, you can put a menu right in the middle of your page, or next to a product, or above your portfolio. You're not limited to the header. And the menu you create can look however you want it to. It can be elegantly simple like this, or you can make it more elaborate and stylized. Add borders, colors, backgrounds, anything you like. Fitting the content menu with your site design is going to be a breeze. Moreover, you can pick whether the menu will be horizontal or vertical by changing its layout, and set all kinds of changes that will appear on hover. There's so much you can do with this widget. Though you should note that this widget is designed to work with first level menu items only. And in this video, we'll introduce you to what options it has so you can make the most of it. Let's get started. Head over to the back end. Now, I have this page where I'll be adding my menu. But before I can do that, I need to have a menu. So, I need to take a step back and access my WordPress dashboard, specifically the section under Appearance menus. I have it open here to my content menu 1. This is a menu I created before the start of this video, so we wouldn't waste time. The point I want to make is that you can create a menu as you normally would, mine has some custom links as items, and then save the menu you've made with the name you'll be able to remember when you go back to page building. When you're ready, search for the content menu widget. There it is. Let's add it to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default. Pretty straightforward. It shows the menu that I created. I only have the one on my site. If I had several and the widget didn't display the one I wanted right away, I could go here to the Choose Menu option and select the appropriate menu from the drop down list. Again, my list doesn't have more options because I only have one menu on my site. Ok, once you've picked your menu, you can decide on its layout. The default is horizontal, but you can replace it with vertical. Then your menu would look something like this. I have a specific design in mind and that involves using the horizontal layout. So I'll switch back to that. Ok. Next, there's the horizontal alignment option. The default setting is on the left, but you can put it on the right or in the center, which is what I'll do. Under this, we have the responsive options section. At the moment, there's one option in here. Enable responsive menu. Enabling this option will make our menu switch layouts to vertical when viewed on smaller screens, such as mobile phones. I'm going to enable it, and this will give me two more options. The first is Choose Responsive Breakpoint. What this means is that you can choose a width from this drop-down, and screens that are smaller than your set width will display a vertical menu, and screens that are wider will keep the horizontal one. I'll set my breakpoint at 680 pixels, which is roughly the width of mobile phone screens. Then I can set the responsive menu alignment, i.e. the alignment for the menu when it turns vertical. You have the typical selection of left, center, right. I'll be leaving my menu on the left for this. Then we have this section called developer tools. When we open it, there's just one option here. Switching its setting to yes will get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, so we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. Let me put it back. Besides that, we have the help section where you can find some helpful links and resources should you need them. Ok, that's it for the first tab, content. Now we can move on to the second one, which contains style options. The first thing we can change here is the menu typography. This is a collection of options that allows us to style different aspects of the menu text, such as the font family. There is an extensive collection of fonts for you to choose from. Then, there's font size. It's a pretty straightforward option. After that, we have the weight option for adjusting how bold or light the font text will be. I'll set 700 for my font weight. Next, the transform option can change the menu items to uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or keep them normal the way you type them in. The style option can make the menu items italic for example. And the decoration can be used to add a line under, over or through the items. Finally, the line height, letter spacing and word spacing options can help us sort out any spacing issues. 
For my design, I want to draw the letters a bit closer together, so I'll input a negative value, minus 0.2 to be precise. And there, just a touch more compact. And that's it for the typography options. Following that, we have three switches, normal, hover, and active. Each reveals options that govern different versions of the menu display. So when it's just on its own, when someone hovers over it, and when one of the items is active. Starting with normal, we have the item color. Using this color picker, we can easily change the color of the menu items. I want a very dark gray color for this, so I'll add a hex code for that. There. Then we have the item background color, which can look something like this. And under that, we have something similar with the item even background color. So it's also for setting up a background color, but this one only applies to every other menu item. Alright, those were the options for the normal menu display. Let's see what's under hover. Here we have options that will determine how the menu items will look when someone hovers over them. So we have the menu item hover color. And if we set the color here, then that color will be visible only on the menu item that we're hovering over. Ok, and next to that we have the menu item hover background color. With this, any color we set will show the background only for the item we hover over. Ok, that's it for the hover option. Finally, let's see the active display ones. There are the menu item active color and the menu item active background color. Basically, the same two options we've seen already. One that lets you set the text color and one that lets you add a background color to that text. Now, the thing with the active settings is this, and it's also why I'm not showing you their effect. They show when you're on one of the pages displayed in the menu. So, if I were on the products page, the corresponding menu item will show a difference in its text or background color to mark your place. Ok. So those were the active, hover and normal settings. Carrying on with the rest of the options, we have the vertical padding. With it, we can adjust the space over and under our menu. You can create more space here and here if you like. I'm good with the default since this is a menu pretty much out of context. Then we have something similar under horizontal padding. This option lets us adjust the space to the sides of the menu, as well as to the sides of each menu item. There's also the space between option, if you don't want to change the space to the outside of the menu but you do want to space out the menu items. Then you can make room only between the items. I'm going to set 27 pixels here. Alright, underneath this we have the enable border between items option. By switching it to yes, we'll get these vertical lines dividing the items. If you want to use those borders in your menu design, you can pick their color, like so and set the line thickness. This is what it might look like. Alright, I'll clear this and disable the borders as I don't plan on using them. That brings us to our last style option, menu item style. Using this drop down you can pick how your menu items will look. The default is this simple straightforward text. There are different item styles you can opt for and you should try these out to see which one you like best. For myself, I'll set with active underline here. With this look, hovering over an item will draw this line under it, and the same line will disappear if we move away. For this menu item style setting, we have a couple of additional options. The first is the menu item underline distance. By adjusting this option, we can set how close or far the underline will be from the text. By increasing the positive value, the line climbs towards, and even over, the text, as we can see here. By setting a negative value, the line draws away from the text. You can see how far under it is now. I'll clear this to keep the default setting. And our second new option is the menu item underline thickness. If I increase it, I can make the line bolder. At 4 pixels, it's pretty thick. I'll set 2 instead. And there it is. Simple and elegant. Now, this is just one possible design solution for your content menu. But there are other combination of options you can make to create a massive difference or to create variations on a general look. And it's the latter we'll be considering now. I'm going to add two more content menus and show you how you can create subtle style differences while staying true to what may be an overarching design direction and idea. So I'll add one more menu now. 
content there. Since we've covered all the options, I won't be explaining them again. I'll simply run through the changes so you can see another possible style solution. Some of the things I'll make the same, such as the alignment, center, and responsive options. Yes, I'll enable this and set 680 pixels here too. Then I can switch over to the style tab and adjust the menu typography. The weight can be 700 and the letter spacing minus 0.2. There we go. Following that, I'll change the item color. I'll make it a lighter gray than I had before. Perfect. And for this version of a content menu, I'll set the background color too. It's going to be a very light gray. I don't want to overwhelm the text. Okay. And I also want to put something new in the hover settings. So I'll put a much darker gray for the menu item hover color. And now when I hover over an item, it gets darker. And that goes for everything in the menu. Alright. The next thing I want to do is stretch out the coverage of my background color. I'll do that by changing the padding. Firstly the vertical, I'll set 29 pixels. And then the horizontal will be 64 pixels. Finally, I'm going to sort out this gap by adjusting the space between items option. I'll put 0 and there. No extra white spaces between the menu items. The background color has given the menu a rectangular look. It's not super obvious because my chosen background is light, but if I go back to the normal settings and then open the item background color, I'll cut my color so I don't have to type it back in later. Then dragging the slider around shows the possibilities of a bolder color background and what that might look like. So it's an interesting option if it works with your site design. For my part, I'll paste back the hex code for that light gray I've opted for at the start. And there we go. Another content menu done. So we're still working within the range of blacks and grays, going for a subtle minimalist look, but a few changes can be more than enough to create a wholly different impression of the menu. Let me show you one more possibility. I'll add a new content menu to the page. Just let me find it first. There it is. I'll drag it over. Okay. The initial steps for all my variations are the same, so I'll be quick about it. Alignment, center, responsive options, yes. Breakpoint at 680 pixels. Now over to the style tab. The first thing I'll change is the menu typography. I want the weight to be 700. And I'll transform the text to capitalized. Finally, I'll set the letter spacing to minus 0.6. That's all I wanted in the menu typography settings. Next, I'll set the item color to an almost black shade. Okay, there. Then I'll increase the space between items slightly by setting 29 pixels for it. There we go. Then, for menu item style, I plan to use the setting with icon for my third and final menu. However, I'm going to take the chance to first go through the other unused menu item style settings with you. As I said, I'll be using the setting with icon, so we'll look at that one at the end. Next to it, there's the with active icon setting. I just want to briefly show you what it looks like, so I'll use the active item icon field to upload an SVG. Just a moment, this one. Insert media. And the icon I added will be visible when I hover over a menu item, or if I'm viewing the menu from one of the pages listed in it. In other words, an active page. So, the with active icon setting displays the icon when there is some sort of interaction with the menu. And this menu item style shares a lot of options with the setting I'll be using, called with icon, so we'll cover them then. Alright, I'll clear the icon and then we can look at the next available style setting for our menu. With active underline is something we've already seen. That's the setting I used here for my first menu. And as its name suggests, it has an underline that appears when we interact with the menu. Similar to this, we have the Width Active Floating Underline setting. The options that come with it should be familiar to us by now. The main difference between this and the underline style I used earlier is in this smooth animation effect that makes the line seem to slide when I hover from one menu item to another. Hence the floating underline whereas the regular one just underlines the menu item text as we move from one bit of it to another. Alright, and the last available menu style setting is with Active Background SVG, 
This allows us to upload an SVG that would appear under a menu item when we hover over it. Let me show you. I don't have an SVG prepared for this, so I'll use something that's already in my media library. Say, this one. And insert media. And then when we hover, the icon pops up behind the text. Also, you can see how it adapts to the width of each menu item while maintaining its ratio. And this can look even better if you have an icon with a rectangular or oval shape that could do something like encircle the text. And with this particular menu style setting, we also get an option called Icon Appear. It allows us to select the animation effect for the icon's appearance. The default is Fade In, and it looks like this. Then there's Reveal from Center Horizontal, which looks like this, and the Reveal from Center Vertical, that has this look. And finally, we have the Reveal from Left, which creates this effect. Alright, I'll put this back to the default setting, and clear the icon I used. And now we can look at the last of the menu item style options, the one I skipped, and the one I plan to use for my final menu, the setting called With Icon. Now as you can see, this has opened several additional options. The first of these is a field for choosing your icon. You can get something from the extensive icon library that's been included, or you can upload a custom SVG, as I'm going to do. The icon I want is already in my media library. It's this one, Insert Media. And there's my new icon now. The next option here is for deciding what kind of effect the icon should have when you hover over it. The Move icon on Hover option is set to Horizontal Short by default, and that looks like this. We can replace that with just Horizontal and get this look. Or we can pick Vertical, which looks like this. Diagonal, that has this diagonally moving animation. Or we can set it to None, so there would be no movement on Hover. For my design, I'll stick with Horizontal Short. That was this one. Alright. After that, we can pick the menu item icon position. Right now it's on the right, but I can move it to the left. I'll go back to using right as it goes much better with the icon I've chosen. Then we can set the vertical offset for our icon. This option lets us move the icon up or down. You can see it's all the way up here now. I'm going to set 5 pixels for this. And yes, it looks lopsided now, but I'll be changing the icon size shortly so it will all match up. To do that, I first need to enable the custom icon size option. Then I can adjust the size using the slider here or type in a value. I'll put 6 pixels for my icon size. OK. And add the space between menu items and icon, that's going to be another 6 pixels. There we go, that's this gap here. And my icon size and vertical offset settings make a lot more sense now that it's all sorted out. And that's my third and final custom menu variation done. Though, since it's a bit too close to the one above it, I'll just open the section editing options, you can access them by clicking here, and then in the advanced tab, I'll use the padding option to add a bit more space above the final menu. So I'll click here to delink the fields, and then I'll simply add 40 pixels at the top. And that's it! All my menus are nicely arranged now. Let me save my work. Ok, so those were my three menu variations. Each is slightly different thanks to the changes in the style options, but they all look similar enough that they can fit within the same style guidelines for a website. This illustrates how small modifications to the same element can make a big difference. If you recall the page we started from, you'll see other examples of this widget's use. They showcase everything from the versions that I made to completely different looks made with different combinations of options. Whatever you decide to do, we hope you found this video tutorial helpful and that you will soon be trying out the content menu widget, along with others in the key add-ons for Elementor collection. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thanks for watching!